Welcome everybody. Today we have Ryan E. Walters from RyanEWalters.com. This guy is doing big things on his blog. I love his blog. It just has so much good information. And you definitely have to hit it up if you want to learn all kinds of things about cinematography. He doesn't hold back over there. Today, what we're going to focus with him is a piece that he did for 48-hour film festival. And he's going to break it down for us, the lighting, a lot of the decisions that he made, uh, what, what equipment he used. In this first video, we focus on the lighting of the opening scene. And also, don't forget to check out the other videos. I simply split them up to make it easier for, for you to watch and to just go directly to whatever it is that you're interested in most. And also for sharing purposes, you don't have to share a 45-minute video. You can share just the ones that are, are more uh, speaking to you. Uh, but the other videos talk also about uh, some of the lighting in the hallways. I really love that shot. And we also talk about gaffers and how to work with gaffers and also what, what camera would Ryan buy if he had a choice today because there's so darn many of them right now. Uh, yeah, so let's dig right into it and enjoy and share it with everybody. Okay, well, uh, Ryan, uh, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to the show. It's Big League Film School. It's, uh, it's truly an honor to have you on. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been following you, see your blog, and you know, you're doing just amazing stuff. So thanks for thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me on. It's an honor to be here. Absolutely. Uh, your your blog. You know, one of the reasons that I wanted you on is besides the fact that I've seen your work and 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 there's so much to learn from it. I love. I mean, every post that you that you put on is 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 jam packed. I mean, there's no like you know, here's a couple paragraphs and. You know, and that's it. It's always like it just keeps on going, but it's so it's so thorough and 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 leaves me you know not wanting for anything. Like it's uh, every topic is fully covered, uh, and uh, you know it's just so great to have that kind of uh, information being put out there. Well, good, good. I'm glad you glad you appreciate it. Um, basically, with my blog, um, I put out the content that I wish I would have had. Um, you know, when when I was just getting started, um, so I. I, I tend to do have longer longer blog posts, but it was the kind of stuff that I wanted to have when I you know first got got started. Right, right. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I see out there seems to be very like I don't know, like fluff kind of. You know, yeah. It, it's part of the reason why I'm doing this show is because I was having a hard time uh, getting to the nitty gritty on how things are being done. So I want to bring upon people like like yourself, and 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 not just discuss you know general. You know, general cinematography uh, talk, but more: how do you achieve certain shots and et cetera? Um, so, with that in mind, let, let's let's just dive right in and uh, and share with the with the folks some good stuff. You have a piece. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it that you did for a forty eight hour contest film festival or something like that? Why, why don't you take over? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, um, there's there's a film festival called the Forty Eight Hour Film Festival, and uh, basically, you've got 48 hours to write, shoot, edit, grade, and deliver. Um, you know, a, a film. It can be no longer, I think, than like six minutes. Um, you all meet up up at a location. You're given. Um, you, you pull from a hat. Um, you know the, the genre that you're going to be given, and then you um, are given a character name, a line of dialogue, and a prop that you have to use, and then. Um, you got to de deliver that final film in 48 hours, otherwise uh, you're, uh, yeah, you lose. And uh, <laughs> yeah. and this last year, uh, my team came in. Um, we came in first place, and then I, I also got best cinematography for it. Wow. Okay. So that that right there already is like there's a certain skill set that I think a cinematographer has to have to be able to do something. It's such you know under such pressure. Uh, time pressure, you know, you don't get to really uh, location scouting, you know, all, all this stuff is just out the window. I was actually going to ask you a little bit about location scouting, which I think is probably very minimal here. Uh, yeah. Well, so, actually, that's one thing that you can do beforehand is that um, while, while you can't write anything and you obviously can't shoot anything or edit anything, um, they do let you, you know, assemble your crew beforehand and then they do let you choose you know what you want your locations to be so so you can have that stuff locked down um but everything else you got to figure out figure out uh, as as it's given to you but how do you know how how are you working on a location before you know what your story is going to be or 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's where reverse engineering is, is, is really key to turning something around in 48 hours. And basically, um, you know, we got together as a team and figured out, okay, these are the resources that we have. Um, and, and, and how are we going to best take advantage of them? And so uh, as soon as, uh, you know, our, our uh, genre was given to us, um, the, the two writers, uh, AJ and Sean, started writing stuff around what we had. Um, so so just, just about working backwards. Yeah, okay, wow, interesting. Um, okay, let, let's dive right into it. So this piece is basically some cops uh, getting a tip from a lady uh, out on the street in the middle of the night, and then they follow the they follow that lead, uh, and then you know then it turns into something sci-fi basically at the end. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere, they get zapped into into yep. history. Uh, but um, that first opening scene, you know, it's basically we're dealing uh, with a, a lady of the night, as we call it, right? Uh, in the <laughs> uh, she's out there uh, in the dark in a, like a street alley. And the cops are pulling her over and having a discussion with her. So, you know, maybe you could get walk us through that scene where the lead cop is discussing, you know, is having that that interaction with her. And how do you go about lighting that in a way that it looks realistic, you know, as opposed to just some bright light coming out of nowhere? That, <laughs> that, and and how do you technique wise? How did you go about lighting the the, the faces so that they're lit and not the and not the whole background. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to do a lot of cutting of the light, but, you know, technique. Let, let, walk us through some of that, because it's probably second nature to you and not for a lot of people. Yeah, well, um, I really enjoyed that scene, because um, there's a, a bit of ingenuity that, that went into it. We, uh, we, we originally had a, a, a cop car available to us, but the cop car wouldn't uh, drive to that location, so we ended up uh, taking the light bar off of the cop car and using one of one of our friends cars and just put it right on top and then it was about creatively framing that out so you can't tell it's not a real cop car right. um, you know as a, as a little foreground element um, from, from there and then uh, then it was just about taking a, a look and, and 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 finding a composition um, that that really worked well um, the the exterior that we used was um, Outside of outside of the second second location that that we shot in, and it was actually it was actually our our home base. Um, and as soon as I, you know, had composition framed up, um, you know, th that I liked, you know, there were all these boxes and all this you know crap everywhere uh, um, that that had some nice nice texture and grit to the image. Um, basically, with forty eight hours, you know, it, it's about reinforcing some of the light that's already there. And, and trying to work as minimally and as fast as, as uh, possible while still getting some great content. So, um, you know, for example, in that uh, in the wide shot, all, all I have is a uh, is a 1K uh, open face and a um, I'm trying to remember what the other light was. Uh, um, I think the other one was a was a 750 source four, um, and basically we just uh, as soon as I had the shot shot framed up, there was already a uh, street light, you know, about a uh, block and a half away, and and, and it was um, you could very faintly see it on the actors, um, and and so that that gave me the drive um, or 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 the reason or, or the motivation for 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 where the light was coming from. Um, so from there, it was just a matter of you know getting about a hundred feet of. Uh, Extension cords and then running it out and <laughs> yeah and then so setting let, it up. Let's get let's get real technical. Uh, tell us the difference between uh, the open face and the the, the source four. What are they? Or, what are their the differences in what they accomplish? When do you use them and how did you use them in the scene? Yeah, the uh, the, the open face just puts out a, a ton of light. It's it's not very controllable. It just you know essentially blasts blasts the scene, which is why it's called the open face. There's no like real glass or anything to to, to cut it down, um, and and the source four um, is a uh, also kind of also called like a rock and roller uh, light. Um, a lot of times you'll see it uh, when you go to music concerts and, and stuff like that. It, it's very very controllable. It, it it has like blades on the inside of the um, 
oh, I forget what it's called. And anyway, on the inside of the tube, yeah. uh, there, there are a bunch of blades that you can really cut and, and, and define the light. Um, so it's a lot more controllable. Um, and really the reason why I chose, chose those lights there is because um, the light had to be far enough away um, so that it's not in the shot, which is why I took the, took the Source 4, because uh, um, it, it, it has a lot of punch to it. Um, and, and so I used, I used that to get the main, you know, the main highlights that you see and, and the punchiness uh, in, in the image there. And then I uh, took the took the one K um, and basically used it as a, a general overall fill. Um, so so some of that you know spread and, and fall off that you see, um, you know, kind of in the background is is what that one K is doing. So, so let me recap. The, I, I don't know if I lost you there. Two two lights. Yep, two okay, lights. Two lights. So the one K is more just giving the 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 overall uh, bringing the, the 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 overall levels up. Of the scene, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Now, how? But but surely you have to keep it off. I'm looking at the image right now. This wide shot, you 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 know, I see most of the light being concentrated on those boxes that the lady is resting up on, and some on the yep. on the wall behind her. Not so much on the floor, you know, like a little bit on the floor, but not really. You you see what I'm saying? So that's probably crucial, right? That you're not blasting the floor. Um, yeah. 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 So, yeah. The, yeah. That main, that main bright area there. Is is coming from the source four, and then um, the, both both li both lamps are rigged to the same um, uh, beefy baby stand, so so bigger stand than than a C stand. Uh, we had we had two lights rigged to that, um, and so the source four is you know is what's pounding that that light and allowing me to keep it on the boxes and, and keep it off the floor. So that's giving me the, the that precise control there um, that I don't have with the open face and the open face. Is uh, panned a little bit, uh, I believe, stand right, um, and that's what's helping to bring out the detail on the wall. And then as it as it falls off uh, into the background there. I see. So okay, uh huh. So uh, yeah, yeah. So so essentially, you got one light pointing here and one light just a little off off axis. Right. The, and it's the off axis one is, is is the open face. Are you doing any sort of flagging or anything uh, here or? I I started to, but uh, it was just taking too much long, or it was it was taking too much time, so um, so yeah. we lost it. Yeah. What well, What were you trying to accomplish with 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 that? Uh, basically, just, basically just a little more shape. Like um, like I wanted to um, on the bottom of the frame there, you can see that the the light extends a little bit further into some of the um, like like on the ground there. Yeah. As, sure. Basically, I wanted to feather that off a little bit more. I just felt it was a little too too bright. Like I wanted all the uh, the focus, of the attention, just to be on the um, silhouettes that are created by the uh, people as they stand against the boxes. Right. So, so the the the, the source four, uh, its job was what in the shot? Just to really to hone in right on those boxes. Uh, yep. Is that what it was? Because they're not very lit. They're they're like you said. They're almost silhouetted, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're so you're po focusing it more on the wall and on the and on the the boxes that she's leaning up on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, in, in this in this situation, it's about being really creative with the tools that you have to tell the story within the time limits that you have. And so, um, you know, we, we didn't have really any big lights on us. And, and I knew that, you know, uh, from reading the script, this is going to be a more moody piece anyway. Um, so instead of trying to make, you know, a couple of lights do more than they, than they could, what I wanted to do was separate out, you know, our, our characters. So if I could create, you know, layers of, of uh, light and shadow and separate out the talent, um, that would be a more effective use of those tools rather than trying to, you know, use two lights that are underpowered and, that's genius. Yeah, need to be too far away. Yeah, I think that was a genius move here uh, because I think the average person would probably try to pull the characters out so that you can right. see them, try to light them a little bit, and let everything else kind of fall away. But you're saying you didn't have the tools to do that. Right. Yeah, I mean, we didn't have the lights lights big enough, or even if we did have big enough lights, we didn't. You know, um, I believe at that location we had like two 15 amp circuits, so you know. <laughs> 
the, we had next to no power, so you know, right, we right, right. Creatively using the tools. So now, tell me also now. Okay, well, let, let's move along to the like the, some of the close-ups, which I really love because you can really see their face, but it, their face is so clearly, but in a, such a subtle, natural, believable. This is in the in the scene kind of a way. But what I'm curious about before we go to that is, how did you plan this? scene as far as the shooting is concerned did you do all the wide shots which i'm not even sure if there was more than just this one and then move into the close-up which i'm i'm you know obviously that's probably what you did uh and how long did it take to to break down and go to the next shot and how did you know how long it would take to do that because you're on such a time <laughs> crunch you know so walk us through some of those logistics that you have to go through you know to 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 accomplish you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, um, as I've as I've shot more and also been under more pressure, I've I've really learned to um, you know keep things as simple as possible when whenever practical. Um, and you know, in forty eight hours, you you, you got to be thinking simple. Um, you know, you, otherwise you're not going to have a product to turn in turn in at the end. So um, the, we we did shoot all the all the white stuff first, which which was which was just that one shot, but it was the entire scene. Um, so the actors, you know, ran through the, ran through that entire scene. Um, and then for me, it was a matter of just watching the actors, you know, perform and, and figuring out, okay, these are the beats that, that we have in, in the scene. So this is the coverage that we need to get for, you know, to, to make it edit together. Um, so after, after the wide shot ran, um, then it was just a matter of, you know, Tweaking the lights uh, to be as efficient uh, to be as efficient as possible. Um, I didn't do a whole you know breakdown and 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 relight. It was just a matter of you know repositioning the light. Um, uh, the, the gaffer literally went over to the um, light stand and you know walked it in some and and moved it. Uh, camera left a little bit more um, so I could get a little bit more of a edge on the edge on the talent. Very interesting. Okay, so let let let's go to the next. Uh... Uh, shot where basically we're seeing uh, a close, a more, you know, I guess a, a medium shot where you see uh, there's two cops there, but the, the shot mm -hmm. where you see just the the cop and the lady talking, um, yep. and yeah, so so you're saying you pretty much didn't move the lights at this point. That's I'm blown away by that. Uh, is that right? I mean, you want to. They moved. They moved a little bit. Like I. Um, yeah. I I didn't break everything down and and, and relight. It was just a matter of repositioning the lights. So so I moved them over about you know five or ten feet um, to get a little bit more of an edge in there. So I'm um, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the shot right now at uh, where at 34 seconds where where we see her. Lit more, the, her far her far side is lit, and he's yeah. pretty much not not lit. Um, yeah. it, you know, you you you're still using that open source uh, directly on him. There's no kind of diffusion going on. There's no bouncing. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the the only time I used uh, the, a, a bounce was on. Um, was on the younger looking officer um, because with our with our three characters uh, our, our lead officer is you know a bit of a shady underhanded crooked yeah. cop and yeah. then we have our lady of the night so I wanted to reinforce their you know more crooked appearance by being you know less less friendly with with, with their lighting uh, nice very nice and then um, our younger officer who's you know more innocent and just just out on the job uh, you know I wanted to um, soften him up a little bit. So, uh, so with his light, then I just took a, a four by six. Um, it, it's called a California Sun Bounce. It's a big, big collapsible white um, right. card, essentially. Yeah. And I use that to bounce the light back in in on him. So you're actually still using that open source, and you just and you're just bouncing it back I into it. Yep. Wow, that's so efficient! Yeah. My God. Yeah. That's that's clever. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm actually surprised. So how far are these lights? Because I'm wondering. Because obviously, with such powerful lights, you can't be too close. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which is why I, I selected these guys because we didn't, you know, like I said, we had like maybe two, two 15 amp circuits, and um, you know, which is essentially enough to run those run those two lights. Uh, so in the wide shot, um, 
if my memory serves me correct, I think that they were about 20 feet away or so. Uh, um, and then, and then for the close-ups, um, you know, I moved them over about five feet and walked them in, you know, just a little bit more to, ra to raise up the intensity, um, just, just a skosh more. Gotcha. Um, now, now for, for when you go to the close-ups of the, in, the individual close-ups, uh, let's say for the, for the crooked cop, is mm -hmm. that again, pretty much the lights that you're just doing these little minor adjustments just to give you the, you know, just as, you know, so sort of hit them just as much as you want. What's going on there? I mean, you're moving him. I mean, obviously at this point you, we, you can cheat. So you're, you're right. moving him yep. in. And <laughs> yeah. 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 And that, and that was key with both with the, the crooked cop and, and the more, innocent cop, um, you know, I, I, as we flipped around for their coverage, um, I was looking for frames that, that had some detail in the background, even mm -hmm. though it's really out of focus, mm -hmm. I didn't want it to go completely black. Yeah. So we, you know, which would, would shuffle them down, you know, left or right, depending on what the background was to make right. it, um, you know, to give there some depth and, and texture there. Um, and the, the fill on the crooked cop is actually coming from the, uh, from the cardboard boxes. Um, which, which I, which I liked and I was like, you know, it gives them a little bit more of an edge and makes the, you know, pole colors feel a little bit off. Um, so I, so I just went with it. It was about, you know, embracing it and making it work. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Before, before we move on, how, that was a lot on lighting. And I think I, I just got a whole lot out of that, how you can basically take a very minimal setup and just use it to your advantage. Uh, I, I do a lot of lower budget uh, stuff where basically, you know, you don't get the scout, you show up on the day, this is what you have. <laughs> and, yep. uh, and you gotta do, you know, you gotta do this whole thing in, in one day, something that you should be allotted maybe two days to do. Um, so, so to hear all that, that's, that's a lot of good lessons there.